Hello, CMH visitors. My name is Jason Hammond, and I am the ACE Dean Manager here at the Children's Museum Houston. Normally, I would be out and about with the public at schools or other places, but for now, I am at the museum, and I have a really, really fun activity to show you. And this activity is being brought to you by the great, great, fine, fine, wonderful people of Centerpoint Energy, and we thank them profusely for that. So thank you, Centerpoint Energy, for allowing us to do this activity. What we're gonna be looking at today is what we call a crayon rock cycle. And we're gonna demonstrate how every rock can sort of be understood how they're formed, every type of rock. I shouldn't say every rock because that's you know thousands of different rocks, but every type of rock is formed just using crayons. That's all we're gonna use. Well, we're gonna use a few other things, but crayons are the main, main thing that we're gonna use. Now, why is Centerpoint Energy bringing this to us? It's because they provide us with our natural gas and geologists actually are people who help find natural gas because they know if there's certain types of rocks, a sedimentary rock, there might be natural gas there. If they find igneous rocks, they may, uh, maybe there's not natural gas here. Metamorphic, it kind of can kind of go both ways. So that's why Centerpoint Energy is bringing it to us. And again, thank you so much for that. All right, so let's uh, go ahead and get started on this fun activity and see what we can learn. First of all, Right here, you kind of see some of the supplies we're gonna need. We have three different crayons, three different colors. That's really important. I have green, orange, and purple right here. Now, you do not have to have brand new crayons for this. That's what's so great about it. If you have some old broken crayons, you can go ahead and still do this activity because what you're gonna do with the crayons is you're gonna take a pair of scissors or possibly like a butter knife, and you're gonna go ahead and grab one crayon you're gonna grab one crayon, like let's say this purple one here. You're gonna take your scissors and you're gonna go ahead and shave pieces of the crayon off. Now, it takes a while to do this shaving part because, uh, you know, you gotta be really precise. That's why I pre-shaved a bunch of my crayons. And I actually might use some of these big whole pieces for some of the experiments in a moment as well, okay? So let's go ahead and uh, just shave for a little second more, and then I will show you what we're gonna do. Okay, here's the deal. Right now, in the current science, we know of three different types of rocks. They are known as sedimentary rocks, they are igneous rocks, and they are metamorphic rocks. Now, what's really interesting about these rocks is that they can change from one type of rock into another type of rock, depending on what's going on. So, what we're gonna do is we're gonna show you step by step how each rock can be formed and then if you subsequently wanna do more types of experiments, how they can be changed, okay? So the one I always like to start with is the sedimentary rock because it actually has the most steps. It has the most steps. So here's what we're gonna do with the sedimentary rock. Sedimentary rocks are formed from rocks that have already been formed. And what happens to these rocks is they get broken down through the process of erosion. And the erosion processes can include wind, it can include water, it can include uh, ice, glaciers, all that kind of stuff. But basically you're taking an existing rock and you're breaking it down. If you look back at these shavings right now, that's basically what we did. We took an existing crayon and we broke it down into different parts. Now, once they're broken down, they get moved somewhere. So let's say the wind carries them off somewhere. The water moves it around. Glaciers very slowly depositing, moving them around and depositing them somewhere. That's the first step, is to be moved. The second step is to be deposited. And I will show you what that means using these crayons. It's pretty simple. Now watch. Let's say we had a rock, this green one right here. It got eroded and it got moved. And it got moved over to this square here. And we got a few pieces got moved over to this square. All right, that would be the movement and that would be what we call deposition, deposited somewhere. Now, let's say the orange rock also got moved by some process of erosion and it got put on top of the green one. All right, so now we have movement and deposition of two rocks, and we also have what's called layering. We're layering, layering one rock on top of the other. 
Now we have three different rocks here, represented by crayons. We're gonna take our purple, and we're gonna go ahead and move that one and put that on the top layer. So let's go through all that again. It gets eroded, broken down, as you can see, broken down. It gets moved from these areas over to this area. It gets deposited and sits in one spot, and then they start to layer on top of each other. So far, so good. The next step is they have to be cemented together. They have to be crushed together. And this takes millions and millions of years, but we don't have that much time, so we're gonna do it really quickly. I'm gonna take this piece of wax paper, I'm gonna set it on top of all the rocks, and I'm gonna be geological time using my hand, and I'm gonna smoosh them all together. And you're gonna put a lot of pressure on it so that they cement together, and they're gonna to stick now to the aluminum foil square. So smush, smush, smush. I'd hold it for a good second. If you have friends with you, you can all put your hands on top of each other and just really press down. Don't hurt one another though. And we're gonna then take it up, move it off. And as you can see, they all squish together. And I can actually pull this little rock off now. And we have a type of rock right here called a sedimentary rock. Some really, really well-known sedimentary rocks are like sandstones conglomerates, even table salt that you eat, that's a sedimentary rock. And when it's rock form, it's called halite. So that's how you make these types of rocks. And now you can see it's all stuck together now. I'm holding it. Some pieces are eroding off as I hold it too. That's pretty cool. But that's your sedimentary rock right there. Cool. But we have two different other types to make. So we're going to go ahead and do that right now. For the next type of rock, it's called a metamorphic rock. We're going to kind of cheat a little bit to show this sort of process, but we're not going to cheat in a way that it's, you know, not too far off the mark. What we're going to do with this one is we're going to take a pan, this pan right here. We're going to go ahead and put it on here and we're going to fill it up with water that's been boiling over here uh, for the last couple of moments. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take some of our rock shavings. We're going to put it inside this little boat thing right here. And then we're going to set this on top. Now what's going to happen is this. The heat from the water is going to transfer to the aluminum foil. It's going to heat the aluminum foil up. What's going to happen from there is it's going to go ahead and heat up the crayon shavings and they're going to melt down a little bit. That's what's going to happen. They're going to melt down a little bit. Now, you've got to be careful with this one. That's why I made a boat. We're going to put boiling water in here. You do not want to get your hands in boiling water. Okay? So when you have the little boat thing, you can grab it from the top and pull it out very, very carefully. If you have an oven mitt, you can go ahead and put that on and be even more careful. Even better, have an adult help you with this one. They can pull it out and everything would be cool from there. Now the type of rock we're gonna make using this process is called a metamorphic rock. Uh, metamorphic is a word that you might kind of heard before in a different way, metamorphous. Like when a, you know, a caterpillar turns into a butterfly, it's a metamorphous. That means to change. And that's basically what metamorphic rocks are. They're rocks that get hit with a really intense but short amount of heat or pressure, or both, and they tend to change pretty dramatically from that point on. So that's what we're gonna try to attempt to do right now. We're gonna try to attempt to make this rock melt a little bit. Not completely in the liquid, but melt a little bit so that they kind of run together, two different colors that we're gonna use. Ah, maybe we'll put all three in, it doesn't really matter. Kind of melt together so that it looks like a completely changed different type of rock. Now it's gonna still look a little bit like the sedimentary rock we just did, but it's the idea behind it. It's got that melting process that we want you to really take away from this, okay? So, we've got the water going, it's getting there. I'm gonna go ahead, and I have a lot of green, so I'm gonna put some green inside of here. Like you said, get it inside the middle. And I got a lot of purple, it looks like, so I'm gonna go ahead and put some purple in. And again, you don't have to necessarily layer it this time, but you still wanna kinda get it next to each other. You know what, I'll go ahead and just add a little bit of this orange just for fun. Maybe if we put it further away, it'll melt over to it, okay? So you are going to make sure you get this boat with the sides up, and hopefully we can get this uh, melting a little bit. All right, you wanna try this? Let's try this. So I'm gonna check my uh, water really quick. 
It sounds pretty good. It's getting a little warm. Let's go ahead and give it a shot. If steam comes out, we're in good shape. We're in good shape. Steam is coming out. Now, we're gonna wanna get close in on this so that we can really see the melting process. So here I go, I'm putting it inside. And you're just gonna to wanna to watch the crayons right now and see what happens to them. Now, it's not gonna be instantaneous. It's gonna take a while. It's kinda of cool too because it is moving around, but you can already see it's starting to melt. You all see that? You see how it's becoming much more smooth? I kinda of like how it's act actually acting like a boat as well. That's pretty neat. So again, we don't want it to completely liquefy. That's a different type of rock. What we want this one to do is start to change. And you can see the purple's moving into the green and the orange is moving over towards the green. And everything's kind of mixing together. If you want to time it, give it about a minute. Give it about a minute and then you should be good. And then again, just very carefully pull it out. And this is basically the process of a metamorphic rock right here. And Metamorphic rocks tend to have these kind of banding layers in them. If you look, they have these banding layers and they're called foliated layers. And a very famous foliated layer rock is called gneiss. It's not spelled N-I-C-E, it's spelled G-N-E-I-S-S, -S, but they're very beautiful foliated layers. All right, cool. So we got that one done. I'm gonna try not to spill this water everywhere. And I succeeded, did not spill it. So we have one last rock we're going to make. And I'm actually going to do this one a little differently than I normally do. I'm not going to take the shavings this time. What I'm going to do this time is I'm going to take a full piece. And I think I'm going to take a full piece of purple. All right. And once again, I'm going to put it on to an aluminum square. And then I'm going to go ahead and put this on to this pan right here. And then I'm going to take the pan, I'm going to put it inside this oven over here. And by doing so, I'm going to start to create the process of igneous rocks. Now, igneous rocks are volcanic rocks. So for them to become volcanic rocks, they need to melt completely. So let's say a metamorphic rock or a sedimentary rock or a previously formed igneous rock, you know, ground opens up. There's a hot spot of lava right there, gets into the lava, it starts to melt. After a while, a couple hundred years, who knows, that lava that's connected to a volcano erupts. You start to have lava coming out. That lava hardens or chunks of the uh, inside of the lava, the magma has hardened and cooled before being blown out, flies out, you have igneous rocks. That's the most important thing you need to know. That's igneous rocks are volcanic rocks. And for the most part, our planet surface, the crust, is mainly igneous rock. Think about it, we used to be a magma planet. It all cooled and became the crust. So all the ocean floor, igneous rock. So what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna show the process of how that happens. We're actually gonna go ahead and show a big piece of rock melting almost completely into a liquid and then hardening into a rock. Now, again, it's not exactly how it would happen in nature, but it's a good way of showing what you need to know. Okay, so I have tongs for this one because when you pull that out, it's going to be really hot. This oven set to 350 degrees. I have these tongs so I can pull it out and not burn myself. Pushing it in is not such a big deal though for me. So I'm going to go ahead and open that up. I'm going to take this and I'm going to put it inside. And we're not even going to close it. We're just going to put it inside and we're going to see if we can, well, we should close it a little bit. And we're going to see if we can go ahead and watch this thing melt. Oh, look, that was a good suggestion. We have an iPhone light on right now. And look, can you start to see it melting? I can. You can see on the bottom there, it's starting to melt away. It's not going to like all this heat. So this is pretty interesting stuff. Now we do, we want it to go ahead and melt completely into liquid this time. Now you can also do this a more natural way. You can go do this in the sun. You can stick it outside put it in the sun and see how long it takes, you can time it. As you can see, it's not taking very long. It's not taking very long for it to melt inside the oven, but we're at 350 degrees. And you can start to see it's starting to spread around. It's starting to look, actually behave almost like lava. 
But once it comes out, it, once it's, when it's inside a volcano, it's magma. Once it comes out, it's lava. And that's how these igneous rocks are formed. It's when lava cools. And there's different types of lava that cool in different ways that make different types of rock. But look at that, it's completely melted down. And then what you wanna do is you wanna go ahead and open it up. Hopefully it doesn't flip back on you like that. Use your tongs to pull it out. And then very carefully, you can grab the aluminum foil here. Oh, and you can see it's all runny, look at that. And you're gonna set it down and then you're gonna let it harden. And when it hardens, that would be what you would consider an igneous rock. And some of them, this one would actually resemble a very, very beautiful igneous rock called an obsidian. It was called, it's almost like volcanic glass, okay? Uh, and that's like a really fast cooling type of rock. But the most, probably the most famous of all igneous rocks is basalt. And that's again what the crust of the ocean floor is made out of. And there's also another one that people really like, it's called pumice. Pumice has a lot of holes in it. It's very porous, very holy. It actually forms inside a volcano and shoots out. Pumice is actually a rock that floats on water because it has so much holes and so much air inside of it. So it's pretty cool. You use pumice to like scrub your feet, all right? So once this one cools, you would have your igneous rock and then you can actually kind of show off all your different rocks. You can be like, okay, I made a metamorphic one here and I made an igneous one here and I don't know what I did with my sedimentary, but it's somewhere around. Now. Once you're done doing this experiment, sort of have an idea of how these different rocks are formed. This is something you can do. Go outside, find some rocks. If you find rocks that look like they've been sort of like pushed together, that's probably a sedimentary rock. If you find rocks that are really smooth, maybe have a lot of holes in them, one kind of color like gray or black, maybe it's a, a igneous rock. And if you find those rocks with those foliated layers, they look kind of like lines going through it, it's a metamorphic rock. Now, I don't expect you to know what the name of all these rocks, but you might be able to figure out whether it's sedimentary, metamorphic, or igneous. And that's something you all can do. Well, thank you so much for joining me. I hope you have a lot of fun doing this experiment. I had a fun doing it right now, I love this. And um, hope to see you guys soon, and you ladies soon, and everyone in Houston soon. And uh, again, I'm Jason from the Children's Museum Houston, and this has been brought to you by Centerpoint Energy. Thanks a lot.